برنده بود Hello and welcome to Love Talk Today's topic is about magical myth and romantic love My name is Nila and you're watching a special, special Valentine shows with, with Mr. Gregory Morgan. You can call the show and ask your questions about the topic uh, on the line 818-532-6655. And now allow me to introduce the owner of the show. Master of Neuro Linguistic Programming, Certified Master Hypnotherapist, Owner and Chief Operations Officer of Embrace Growth, Mr. Gregory Morgan. Hello to you and happy Welcome. Valentine in advance. <laughs> Thank you very much. Happy Valentine's to you too. You. We have our little heart here today. To, I, I like it because it's this huge heart trying to pass through a small portal. <laughs> yeah. You know? I think it's a great... Uh, topic for our show today. So our t show is going to be about Valentine's Day and the magical myth of romantic love, but it's more than just romantic love. So that's the big topic. Go ahead and put that thing. I want to read again uh, what the uh, show is. At the heart of humanity lies an ancient myth. A myth is a likely story. It's an extraordinary legend of true love, forbidden passions, and heartbreaks. And it's woven into the very fabric of our lives. Now there's a beautiful part about a myth, and that is that it exposes some of the greater ideas, the more elevated ideas, beliefs, and truths that are hidden in the deeper levels of human awareness. Their influence on our daily lives is profound because they form a sort of subconscious background, a background against which we view our world. So that's the topic that we're going to address today. Uh, we have all grown up with stories that began way back in the early Persian uh, uh, Empire uh, about uh, forbidden love, stories of forbidden love, the betrayed king, right? The uh, the, these stories evolved and the characters' names changed throughout the centuries because history, the word his story, is what it means. It's a story and it's his story because why? Because mostly men did the traveling and the storytelling. Okay? And so troubadours, songs, poets would uh, speak of this elevated feeling called romantic love and it was it became the view that in light of this overpowering feeling thus we say I fell in love right we say I fell in love we don't say I found someone and I grew love until it just took over my whole life we say I fell in love like honey I was on my way home and I tripped and fell in love yeah. right um, so now you know the whole deal's off no, it's, it's not an accident, although uh, that's, it, it, that's a hormonal urge. I mean, we can understand that, right? If it looks right, smells right, acts right, talks right, I love it, right? It, but that goes away. Mm -hmm. That goes away eventually. So the idea of, uh, and this began with Isult and Tristan, this, the, the romantic Arthurian, uh, in the Arthurian era of knights and kings and queens, this story became famous throughout the Western civilization of uh, Tristan and Isolde. Now we know that it's an adaptation of thousands of year old stories, but uh, like I said, the characters change and the uh, names change and the story changed and evolved, but they always have the same elements. That story is about uh, the great knight Tristan and his uncle, who was King Mark, and the uncle's queen, who was uh, Isult. And there was a love triangle, and eventually Tristan and Isult escape. They betray their loyalty, they betray their honor, they betray their reasoning, because pretty much means death. Uh, and they betray everything that they have always formally said that they lived for, for this overpowering feeling of romantic love. Now, why do I tell you that? Because this began 
the um, acceptance, if you will, of the idea of passion over reason, lot of uh, feelings over logic. This has become so prevalent that today, if you just fast forward to today, you can quickly see the effects of it where the feelings have overcome our logical thinking. You know, marriages used to be arranged. They were arranged for logical reasons, uh, reasons that would cause others to prosper. Now, I'm certainly glad that that's not the case anymore. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I'm not promoting that at all. Uh, but it began as an institution that had good reasons for being. Reasons that caused nations to uh, stop fighting wars, reasons that caused uh, the economy to increase, and so forth. It caused peace on the land and caused people to prosper. Marriages were hopefully, uh, you know, arranged such that everyone benefited, and your feelings about it, the, the two individuals being married, were secondary. In that age, which again I'm not promoting, I'm just pointing out so that we could see the effects of today's world. In that age, it was in order to bring, it, I don't want to use the word twice in the same sentence, it was in order to bring order out of chaos. There are two elements that are always part of our universe and you'll either fall on one side or the other, but in fact they're one. And I'm going to use my hands to uh, sort of demonstrate it. We think of yin and yang. We think of the feminine, which it would be expressed in many symbols like this, and yang, which would be expressed up, like an upward thing, a phallus. So yin and yang have always been present in our lives. I'll say it another way, order and chaos. Order and chaos, logic, feelings. So these two elements are always either fighting or being married together. So in you know meditation, Zen, Taoism, the things that I've studied and practiced and lived by, uh, it is the marriage of order and chaos that makes a human being whole, that makes a human being complete. We become a thriving, powerful, and uh, loving and compassionate human being when we can bring order to the chaos in our hearts and our lives and, uh, and know when to cause chaos. There, you know, too much order, too much logic, too much reasoning is not only boring, <laughs> It's stifling. It kills off the human spirit. It kills off the creativity, the, the imaginative beauty of uh, the feminine nature, which is in both men and women, of course. When I say masculine and feminine, I'm not being sexist. I'm not saying men and women. I'm using those words to, to express the masculine energy, which tends towards logic, reasoning, and order. <laughs> obviously chaos in there, and the feminine spirit, which tends towards and leans towards feeling, passion, nurturing, and also chaos, right? So, not that women aren't orderly. Obviously, we, we have women running our company, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God for their ability to establish order. <laughs> so, in speaking of order and chaos, yin and yang, masculine and feminine, we open a conversation for the possibility of uh, a mutual attraction. Yes. And at the same time, we, uh, we shine a light on something that is hidden in the subconscious, hmm. hidden in the fabric of the... Uh, We'll call it the community conscious, okay? The, the, the prevailing human consciousness. I called it human awareness or the awareness of humanity earlier. It's something that's hidden in there like a background. Like right now, we're, we're, we're sitting in a room. There's a background. There's a curtain back there, right? Mm -hmm. There's a background. 
The background could be a busy city. It could be any number of things. We just chose this for, for uh, Valentine's Day. Um, in the background of the thinking is that passion and illogical thinking, feelings, are more important than logic and, 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 and um, order. Okay, that's just there in the background, and you don't need me to point it out. Well, I'm going to point it out that in our culture, in our society today, there is a battle going on, you know, between the sexes, between political parties, between countries, um, in the economy, and underlying all of those are is a division of how do you feel about it versus What's the logical, correct, mathematical, reasonable thing to, to, to look at? And I don't say that they're not joinable. In fact, that's what I'm attempting to do in this program is at least bring your awareness to the enormous, fantastic possibility of romantic love. But you can only begin from nothing. In other words, I almost have to destroy the notion of romantic love in order to be able to build romantic love. You can't build what you can't understand and you can't build something new on, on top of something that's running your programs in the back yes. like a virus or <laughs> some kind of automatic programming that you just, and that programming is so prevalent mm -hmm that it's in our cities, it's in, it's in our schools, it's in our churches, it's in our, um, uh, but most importantly, as far as people watching this show is concerned, it's in our relationships, it's in our language. It's so woven into the language that people can say completely illogical things that if you broke it down make no sense at all and yet they sound right. They sound reasonable. We accept it. Nobody says, wait a minute. That, 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 okay, there's, there's campaign, campaign ads and uh, Valentine's cards, to bring it back to Valentine's Day, um, are all emotional, illogical thinking mm -hmm. that uh, put forth a uh, supposed reality. Yes. So we hear it in songs, I can't live without you, I'm no one without you, uh, help me out. What are some of the songs? Uh, my heart belongs to you. <laughs> yeah, my heart belongs to you. And killing me softly. Killing me softly. <laughs> yeah. You are the reason I live. Yeah. Okay, all of those things, right? If you think about them, if you examine them, it's like, that can't be true. Yeah. Not ultimately, not truly, like, like this table is true, we can all agree it's there, yeah. but ultimately you can't agree that those things are true. Um, Mr. Morgan, yeah. I was thinking that to like tear down the belief that we have about love. Can I give you one example of, a, of something that I, I was going through and I now that I'm standing here, I know it was not, it was not like, um, like love built on logic. Um, so I tell you that experience, and uh -huh. then you break that down so it is <laughs> okay. more touchable for, for people. So um, I met someone, and at the first time that we met each other, I felt that I, I know him from long ages ago. I was curious about him. I wanted to know more about him. And then when he was just looking at me, I thought that I'm in heaven. And uh, I just wanted to know more, more and more about him. And then because of the, the, the situation that we had, we had to be far away for two months. And in that two months, we were writing amazing romantic poems to each other and like my heart was beating for him and he was just waiting for me and then after two months we got together and we couldn't like have this separation we, we needed to be with each other all the time we drove to my class and he would sit out of the outside of the class to be with me and we were like very into each other and thinking that is love and then after two months things like things changed. So do you want to tear that so part like, of it? <laughs> what specifically changed? 
Um, things change that, um, so he, he changed in his nature, so he was not okay, that so much. so nature itself yes. is, while it, it can be defined, it doesn't say much, yeah. right? Yeah, so. Because we don't know his nature, so. Okay. Say some more about that. So, for, like, for, for instance, I was like, I am going again out, and last two months we were doing everything to each other. So I was like, I'm going out, do you want to come with me? And he was like, no. And I was shocked that what's going on. I so see, that's a specific measurable result. I'm going to yes. help you as we break it down. Okay. I'm going to go, uh, so I don't interrupt you to be rude. Sure. But I'm going to break it down as we go yes. so that you could see that uh, that was a specific measurable result. Yes. In other words, if there was a video camera following you around, we would see him say no and stay wherever he was while you went someplace else. Yes. And that would be a change in a pattern. Yes. Okay, what else? And then um, I wanted to like spend the weekend with him like we were spending the weekend last two months and he, want, he was like, no, I want to have some time to myself. And um, again, again, yeah. yeah. And so? then he became more private, like he was having his own um, connection, friends, talk on the phone. It's like before we were sharing everything and we were talking about mm -hmm. everything and now he was not. Mm -hmm. So and I felt um, because when you're up there and you're in the sky and then it's like a heaven mm -hmm. yeah. and then all of a sudden you feel that you're thrown out of the heaven yeah. and you're trying to find out what was the scene. <laughs> so. Okay, so that is something. Keep. I wanted you to tell the rest of the story, yeah. but that's something that we all share in common. Yeah. Every human being has a story about when things were going so well. Mm -hmm. And I was at the height of my emotion, almost like ecstatic feelings, yeah. right? So it, it, it permeates every uh, aspect of your being, how you speak, how you think, your, the, the, how uh, literally how damp your eyes are and, and the size of your pupils. I mean, it, I'm talking about every aspect of your being is affected by it. And then suddenly the bottom drops out. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, does that sound like anything that we've all shared in common? How about being born? Yeah. You're in this wonderful environment. You're in a perfect place. Everything's just being piped in. <laughs> you know, you have nothing to do but just sort of be there. And then all of a sudden, the bottom drops out, and you find yourself in this cold, harsh world, surrounded by giants with, <laughs> with loud voices. You know, your ears are like shocked, your skin is shocked, everything about you, in other words, every aspect of your being is completely shocked. Yes. Right? You, and you find yourself in a world that's totally unfamiliar to you and you're clearly not in charge. <laughs> right? <Yes. laughs> you like got you know, you don't you can't control one thing. Right? So hmm, we all share this on a deep subconscious level. I'll I'll go later on, I'll point back to this in, in saying that ha what we expect to happen, we cause to happen. Okay. Eventually. That, that's a more advanced conversation. Yes. But what we're expecting sets up a vibration in such a way mm -hmm. that it's coming to you sooner or later, mm -hmm. right? So if we're kind of expecting the bottom to drop out, and we all are, <laughs> every, don't you have that experience? Yes. Even when things are good. I'm having such a great day. Yes. Right? Don't you kind of expect for the other something else to happen? Yeah. In the background, you're kind of worried that when's the bottom going to drop out? Yeah. So go back to your story. I'm sorry. Um. So yeah, that was the part that. So the bottom dropped out. Yeah. And the, we, till then, from that point, there was this energy that I was trying, and then getting tired going back. He would come and try. And then he would go back, I would go try, and the dynamic changed. Um, so back to what you were talking about is like, we thought that we have a romantic uh, love, but I think it was just a myth. <laughs> huh? It was just? A myth? A myth yeah. Well, a, a myth is, yes. The myth preceded the romantic love. Mm -hmm. So the myth is a story uh, literally is a legend or a story from old, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's uh, you've heard me say it before, give me one miracle and I'll explain everything else, right? Yeah. Give me one miraculous circumstance and everything else seems to fall into order to align with that belief in the miracle. Yeah. 
now I have to talk about the word belief because a myth is something we believe, okay? And the word to believe simply means to act as if it's true. To act as if it's true, okay? A belief, by definition, means you can't prove it. A belief is always about something. You can't prove it, but you believe it's true, and you act as if it's true. In other words, your behavior is regulated by it. So myth is a story. And whether you um, whether you heard that story in school or poems or things like that, it got into your vocabulary, into your feeling system. And so when this feeling came along, mm -hmm. logic went out the window. Yes. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Logic totally goes out the window, you know? And, and so it's kind of like this, you know? I, what I'm seeking in my own life and, in, in, and for others, in, in, and in doing this show even, is to find a balance between order and chaos, chaos and order, uh, belief and truth, knowing something and believing something. You know, it's good to believe certain things, right? Yeah. I believe that tomorrow will be better than today. We, you know, otherwise you don't get up. That's depression, right? <laughs> you just don't get out of bed. <laughs> you sleep late. <laughs> but so you must, we all have this thing in our, it's called the reticular activating system. Never mind, that's too scientific. But uh, we have this part of our brain that, uh, tends to be optimistic. Otherwise, you would not save money. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't really bother working because what's the point, right? It's not going to be better tomorrow. I won't have enough money. You'll tell yourself that um, and so forth, right? Yeah. And so why should I get married? It doesn't. Most marriages don't work out. That would be a logical way of thinking, but we believe that it will. So, of course, and so I'm saying that belief is a good thing. Hope is a good thing. However, you must recognize it for what it is because what you don't see about your beliefs means that instead of using your belief, your belief is using you. Yeah. You get used by our own beliefs. So of course you would believe that this is the one, and uh, right? There's nothing wrong with that. However, how did this story turn out? <laughs> <laughs> Well, it didn't work. Yeah, the bottom fell out. Yeah, because, uh, like, as you said, there were no logic. Mm -hmm. uh, and as much as we tried and we thought that this is real love and we can do, we can make this work with love, I think love is not enough. So There's a song about that, right? Yeah. Sometimes love is not enough. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes but it love is love not helps, enough. but then when there's no logic, right. it can't, yeah. Yeah, sometimes love is not enough. And, and I know that there's lots of other songs. Yes. All you need is love, right? Yeah. There's lots of songs about how love is all you need, mm -hmm. right? There's even, you know, I think there's even a quote by Einstein, the most logical guy, mm -hmm. right? Who said something about uh, with love, you don't, you know, hmm. with, without love, you need force or something like that. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not going to quote something I can't remember quite, uh, quite right. But uh, um, so back to this. Yes. Um, Neither love nor logic was a able to overcome that particular circumstance. Yes. Neither love nor logic. Yes. So, now, I'm going to vote for order rather than chaos in this particular circumstance. With logic, logic is a sacrificial system. With logic, you autumn, you, you're, you're saying, I give, I give up my right to entertain my feelings as being more important than logic. Mm -hmm. So I do what I know is necessary, is logical, in other words, in order to achieve my goal or my outcome, right? Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes in denying our feelings and, or, or withholding our feelings or controlling our feelings in order to pursue an outcome, sometimes the feeling goes away. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? <laughs> That's part of the deal too. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I know that's the bad news, right? People so don't want to let go of the feeling that they will allow themselves to be mm, dragged down into something that they know they all they had to do was let go and, and, and they would have been okay, but they drowned uh, in their feelings. So thank you for sharing that very personal story. Of Is course. there anything else about that that you want well, to Well, that we have a, we have a question from one of your top fans that they're saying Mr. Morgan, please get personal and talk about your experience about love and me. Okay. Great. Please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take the attention off of you. <laughs> um, well, your fans say. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I can do that. I can do that. Um uh, and the truth of the matter is that uh, I have been married a couple of times before I ever married my wife. And in each of those cases, I was uh, guided by my feelings. And sometimes I was guided by her feelings, you know, by the woman's feelings, like she loves me so much that how could I not marry her kind of thing. Uh, so, uh, and, and at the time, in my immature thinking, I, uh, thought, well, this is the right thing to do, and this is a good deal. But what I didn't logically recognize was that in somewhere in the back of my mind was the thought, and I chose feelings over thought, to, uh, but there was a hidden thought that, well, if this doesn't work out, we can always get a divorce. That was a conversation in the back of my head, and it's in the back of a lot of people's heads. They get married thinking about the divorce already. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So the divorce is an option, and they go ahead and get married based on, well, I always have this back door, right? So I did that a couple of times, all right? Got married thinking, well, if it doesn't work out, we'll get a divorce. And guess what? We did. So <laughs> when, when I met my wife, Dr. Zia Sayan, I had decided I'm never going to get married again. And then I met her, and I'm like, I can't, I can't not spend my life with her. So I had all the feelings. I'm like, I've been there before, right? Yeah. <laughs> I've been there before, and I'm not going down that track again. So uh, even though we met, we clearly had powerful feelings for each other. Uh, we stayed apart for about six months in the beginning, mainly because every time I would, anyhow. <laughs> try to express my feelings for her by asking her to marry me or something like that. She'd say, no, you're not ready, or uh, I'm not ready, or whatever, right? Or you just got divorced, so no, and so forth. So she was being logical, even though she had the feelings. And I was being, I, I knew she was right also. Logically, I knew she was right. However, I had these feelings. And one of the feelings was, being very attractive and having a lot of men attracted to her, I thought some guy richer, younger, smarter, <laughs> that's not recently divorced is going to come along and marry that girl, right? So that was part of my logic too. It was part of my motivation to get my life in order and to sort myself out. And after about six months, I came back to her and I said, I just, here's the deal. It's not that I don't want to get married. I like being married. I like having one person in my life that I can trust and that can trust me and that I, that we create a future together and I'd really like to do that with you. But here's the deal. I'm never going to get divorced. I'm never going to get divorced again. That's like n not part of the deal. I've been married before with this thought in the back of my head. That thought's gone. That door is closed. So you think about it now. If you want, if you marry me, I'm not going away. Okay, I'm just, whatever there is to work out in this relationship, and I know there will be, I'll hurt you, you'll hurt me, and we have. I'll disappoint you, you'll disappoint me. You won't live up to my fantasy, and I won't live up to yours. All of this I logically know already. Let's do it anyhow, and let's decide here before we marry, that no matter what it is, we will talk about it, we will communicate about it, and we will make whatever personal interior changes that we need to make inside ourselves 
in order to rise to the occasion, in order to move the conversation forward, in order to create more of this love in our life. Now, I can tell you that my life, my entire life today, including my home, my finances, my health, my relationship with my wife, uh, my relationship with the employees here at Embrace Growth and with the assistants and the people that, uh, and my relationship with you, whoever's watching, is a creation. It was created. The guy that was 20 years ago, he did not have the wherewithal to do that. The guy that got divorced all those years ago, the guy that married, the, that guy didn't exist. Well, <laughs> This guy didn't exist then, so I could not have created. I was still being run by a program that this is what this program is about, of, of um, passion over logic, codependence. I just want to say a word about codependence here because that's the kind of relationships we've all inherited. Mm -hmm. When you make another person responsible for your well-being, for your happiness, your joy, your well-being. In other words, I can't feel good without you. If you don't love me, I'm nothing. In other words, when you cause another person, first of all, it's a huge burden on them and they could never sustain it. And secondly, you just gave away all of your power, all of your personal power, and with it, your ability to create and cause your own life. When you give away your power, you have nothing to create. You might make stuff up, but it'll be inauthentic. It'll be a copy of somebody else or something else that you've heard. It won't come from your own soul. It won't be your own original thinking. I don't mean that you don't learn from other people, but then you take it in, you make it your own, and you generate it into the world with your own unique signature that is yours. and to. And, and I'm saying that everything, even the studio we're sitting in, the cameras that are there, all of that has been created by myself and my wife. It what didn't just happen. We didn't inherit it. Yeah. We caused into being the, and, and, and once you begin to master that kind of creativity, you're able to do it for other people. In fact, you can't stop doing it for other people. It, to not do it would be an integrity issue. Yeah. To stop giving and sharing that kind of well-being, it becomes the source of your life. And if you didn't do it, if you, you would be betraying yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You'd be betraying yourself. So uh, that's all I want to say about co codependent relationship for the moment. Yeah. So to be clear for the audience, w would you please tell us in this relationship that you explain what was the romantic love and what was the myth? Uh, can you, like, tell us? Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> luckily I had coaches also yeah. back in those days and so uh, uh, I belong, I, I'm part of a, a, a men's team, set, us six guys, mm -hmm. and we've been uh, meeting for uh, almost uh, 26 years now. Wow. Okay, and uh, we meet every two weeks and now we all live in different places, a couple of us live here in LA, and but we meet on the phone and we uh, you know, we're growing old together, <laughs> supporting each other uh, through uh, life and death and marriages and births and, you know, all that stuff. And uh, they were around when I met Azita and w they were around when I got the divorce. Yeah. And luckily I had uh, coaches at that time or people around me that cared about me. And uh, so they said, we're not going to let you get married until we say you're ready. Okay, because you are out of your mind. You're in love with this girl, and you're just going to do whatever it takes to be with her, and then, you know, you're going to screw it up. Those weren't exactly the words they said, but something like that. <laughs> you're just going to mess it up, and then we're going to have to listen to you for the next five years about her, right? So, no. So, that was, you know, masculine logic, <laughs> you know, like imposing itself on me. And, you know, luckily there was enough of them that I couldn't not listen. And uh, 
you know, and if I said, you know, to heck with you guys, I'm going to do it anyway, I would have betrayed my own self. Yes. I would have betrayed my own loyalty, my own uh, honor. We live by a code of honor with these men, and we never give up on each other. That's part of our code of honor, right? And we never betray the men of this team for anything, for other women or for women or, or, or anything else. And our highest priority is our families. So don't get me wrong, it's not our highest priorities or each other. That could happen, but that's not the case here. Our highest priorities are to have successful, happy families and to cause masculine leadership into the world in such a way that the world benefits from it. And we're all doing that in our, in our own way. And so I had those guys. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, you asked me what was the romantic part and what was the thing. Yeah, so yeah. the romantic part was this overwhelming feeling mm -hmm. of knowing she was the one. Mm -hmm. So somewhere in my soul, I recognized her and, I, and, she, and, this, and it was mutual. We were like, you. Right? It was very mutual, powerful. And we couldn't, even if we were anywhere near each other, with, there was this buzz of energy that, uh, that was unmistakable, okay? And I, I've, I've trained in synthesize, synthes, synthesizing myself to uh, what we could call your auric field, my, my field of energy around me. And I've done that through martial arts and dance and a number of meditation and a number of things, that disciplines throughout my life so that I can actually feel what's going on with other people. And so it was like, mm. in, in Star Wars, they'd call it a disturbance in the force. Okay. <laughs> so I had, there was a disturbance in the force when she was around. And uh, that was the other part of the romantic part of it. And uh, well, besides which, have you seen her? She's beautiful. You yeah. know, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> so there was that. And the myth part was? Uh, the myth part was that if we just do everything that we, if we just do whatever it takes, it'll work. Okay. You know, it was kind of like a little bit of logic and a whole lot of feelings, like a hope and belief, like, you know, and, and it was belief against evidence. Yes. Okay. So that's, that's, that's part of a belief system, right? Is even though there's evidence to the contrary, you still hold your belief. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. People do this with religions, they do it with political systems, they do it with health systems, they do it with uh, all kinds of stuff, cures of all kinds of things, and they particularly do it and where it's the most damaging is in romantic relationships. They believe it should all work out because I love them so much, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. So it sounds familiar to everyone. We've all yes. done that. Yes. So uh, when you were at that state, um, coaches and your men friend helped you um, get logical yeah. to be able to make this work. Yeah, one of my coaches, I, he said, how do you know you love her? And I said, man, when I'm around her, I got all, you know, I described the, the physical sensations and everything. And he was like, I want you to eat an entire pizza and run up five flights of stairs and see if it doesn't feel the same way, <laughs> right? <laughs> kind of dizzy and it's a pit of your stomach. He said, you know, it's a, their body sensations, their feelings, yeah. right? Feelings, physical sensations is not an indication of love and the success of a relationship. Then what is? Ah. <laughs> 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 well, we've been talking about chaos and order. Yes. Too much, so I can use it like a balance, okay? Or, or I could use it like if I represented the feminine by the upheld hand, the receiver, mm -hmm. right? Feminine is the receiver, physically, mentally, emotionally, and masculine is the penetrator or the aggressor, if you will. Uh, when they come together like this, this, by the way, is the, the bow or the salute you see in, in all Kung Fu movies before two, before two combatants join together, they, they, they give each other the symbol of I'm covering chaos with, with love, right? I'm covering my aggression with my love, mm -hmm. masculine, feminine, and let's find order here, you know? The left hand covers the right fist, you know? So uh, that's not a mistake. That's a, that's a logical and emotional and spiritual symbol. Mm -hmm. So yin and yang is such a symbol. The, the yin-yang sign yes. is such a symbol. It's order and chaos. 
you can think of them as two things, but then that disconnects you from their ultimate meaning. Yes. They're actually one thing. So you and I come with masculine and feminine. I said earlier that I'm not just talking about men and women. I have a very feminine side. I, I'm, I'm, I'm capable of and in touch with enormous feelings of compassion and love and nurturing and, and caring and uh, I get my feelings hurt, all that stuff, right? And then, you know, I can be really macho. <laughs> I can be very, very tough. And, uh, and, and, and so both of those sides of myself, when not connected, can be very destructive. It can be very destructive to be too much compassion without the ability to fight uh, is weak. It, it'll just cause you to be weak and taken advantage of. Compassionate, loving, caring people get walked on all the time. And on the other hand, people who are too logical, too, too, too powerful, too masculine, too, too young, if you will, uh, they don't get to enjoy those feelings of love which are already within them, but they live their life <laughs> mostly screwing up other people because yes. <laughs> they don't feel it, <laughs> you know, they don't feel the, the, the hurt that they've caused. And, you know, I've been guilty of both, so. So to be specific, how, what are the steps that people should take in order to have their relationship have a romantic love and work? Okay, so I'm going to point to, mm -hmm. okay, I'm going to point to the, uh, Ali Jun, uh, the romantic uh, 12 steps of romantic relationship. And I, I, I want to say up front, I didn't set this up so that I could sell you CDs because <laughs> I really didn't, okay? But I have answered that question amply, the one you just asked, mm -hmm. in, um, in, in these CDs. They come in both English and Farsi. Um, there are steps to creating a romantic relationship. And you can't just fall in love and expect it to work. We can, okay? Just falling in love is going to, you know, step six or seven. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of people, they meet, they fall in love, and they get married. <laughs> then they get pregnant, then they hate each other, and, and they, get they get divorced, divorced. <laughs> okay? And then the kids suffer, but they saw that happen in their childhood, so they do that too. Yes. All right? Because they're watching and absorbing, and they're seeing how adults, who are clearly in charge, not me, right? If I'm a child, um, they're seeing how adults deal with their problems. And what they do is they fight and divorce, okay? So, hmm. That... What I saw in these 12 stages was a lot of my learnings from um, in that time that I fell in love with Azita Sayan and uh, was divorcing from my second time of divorcing. And, uh, and I loved that woman too for many years. We were married for 17 years and so what, what's not to love? We just, there was no romance anymore because I didn't know how to do that. You know, we had come become roommates. And I'm like, I'm too young to have a roommate. <laughs> and too old to have a roommate and too young to not have any love in my life. You know, so that it just wasn't there. We were like old friends. And it had become that because we didn't know how to create romantic love. My answer to it was, oh, let's go to romantic places. And so for about the last four years of our marriage, that's what I did. I took her to massage things and went to nice you know, vacations, and we did all this stuff, but the feeling never came back. The feeling was not coming from the inside. The feeling was coming from the circumstances or the place we went to. So, you know, uh, we, we joked about it or talked about it last night before the show. You know, if you put chocolate and champagne and fireplaces together and candlelights, you got romance, right? <laughs> all that means romance to you and me, Yeah. right? It, oh, pretty universally, right? You put on the right music, you got romance, right? So we did all that stuff. No romance. Yeah. Just props. Just props. You know, you put on all the nice clothes, the right makeup, you break music, but the feeling, you know, it's just not there, right? And when it's not there, it's not there. 
So the 12 stages of romantic relationship resulted as my intense study over a six month to one year period, I'm still studying, okay, to tell you the truth, <laughs> all the time, about what causes those feelings, mm -hmm. what do they really mean? And so here's, here's the whole point of this show. Really what I wanted to point at was in the last paragraph of what was up on the show, uh, what, in the beginning, the, the thing that was in the newsletter. The last paragraph of that is I said that the, the uh, great thing about myths the beauty of a myth is that it exposes some of the greater ideas, beliefs, and truths hidden in the deeper levels of human awareness. The greater, what is it? Greater ideas? Greater ideas, beliefs, and truths hidden in okay. the deeper level of human awareness. Greater ideas, beliefs, and truths. Okay? So, I believe, and I not just uh, so to believe it means I act as if it's true right mm -hmm. <laughs> in my life so I believe and act and live my life by um, that we all have like a memory or um, really a direct knowledge or feeling of a divine beauty love goodness and truth that exists within us I believe this and live my life by it because it's true for me and if it's true for me, it must be true for you. I don't think I, I, I do believe that there may be people who are sociopathic and who have a, a mental imbalance or malfunction that may not be able to get in touch with that. Doesn't mean it's not there. They just have no access to it. Okay, for a lot of reasons. Um, but I believe that normal functioning human beings with a normal uh, nervous system have within them a deeply recognized divinity, okay? A little piece of God, if you will. And we search to find this piece of God expressed in the world somehow, either through songs, through poems, through beautiful scenes, Beauty, truth, and goodness, these are the three spiritual paths, the three main spiritual paths, beauty, truth, and goodness. So when we see beauty, truth, and goodness in a person over there, we're like, that's it. That's what I'm looking for. And then it wakes us up, this divinity within yourself, and you reach out and they go, yeah, me too, right? And so this divinity connects with itself, found in another then our little minds, our little conscious minds go, oh, we should get married and have children, <laughs> right? This is what we do. So what this realization has enabled me to do is not only once you recognize it, then you realize it's in others, and then when you realize it's in others, you realize that there's a way to create a pathway so that that stays present in your life. That's what the real romance is. The real romance is we are actually falling in love with a higher expression of what's already within us. Otherwise, we could not see it. Otherwise, we couldn't feel it. If it wasn't already there, you couldn't have it. So then we make the mistake of thinking, they did it to me. Mm -hmm. They made me feel this way. No, you were already that way, and they just reminded you. Right? They reminded you. And of course, that starts all the stimulation of hormones and everything. And you want to have sex and to have babies and do all that stuff. That's all part of a survival mechanism for human beings so that we like procreate and have kids and keep them alive. That's, that's the logical part. That's really just biological machinery. But the spiritual part, the emotional part, is a recognition of a divinity within yourself that you see in another because they're manifesting it somehow. And so naturally you go towards that. Now, what that enables one to do, aside from creating their own romantic relationship with somebody it logically would work out with, mm -hmm. right? You, could, you know, it's totally illogical that Azita and I would be, you know, I'm from Oklahoma. I totally got a totally different background. She's from Tehran, you know? It's like totally different from each other in so many ways, you know? So anyhow, without dwelling on that. So 
even if it doesn't seem logical, if you're powerful enough logically and grounded in your logic, you can make things work. Hmm. This relationship that you couldn't make work, y'all could have made that work, but you have to be willing to do things yeah. that sacrifice things that you may not be willing to sacrifice. Yeah. You know, if she said, well, we have to move to Toronto, that would have been a no. That's a deal breaker for me. No, I don't want to live there. I'm American. I want to live here. Mm -hmm. And so uh, back to this. I keep missing the one thing that I really want to communicate to you. And that is when you can fall in love with another, and I don't mean fall, when you can create love with another ongoingly, willingly, consciously doing it, knowing that you're doing it, you can have that with anyone. You can recognize the beauty and the goodness and the truth in another human being and fall in love all the time. And I do. I fall in love with people I meet all the time. I just see them. I recognize something in them that I, that I know. I see their struggle. I see um, their confusion and their doubt. And I see their powerful willingness to stand up for something and to, to express love into the world and who wouldn't fall in love with that so i'm kind of messed up and then i just go around falling in love all the time <laughs> it doesn't mean i have to have sex with them i have to ever see them again that i have to uh, you know marry them or something mm -hmm. it doesn't mean and, and, and it, it would be dishonorable to do that and it would dishonor who i am it would also uh impinge upon, it totally destroy really, my ability to create ongoingly what it is that I'm really up to, which is causing other people to have that same experience. If you were falling in love with people all the time, wouldn't you not logically mm -hmm. want them to be able to do that too? So really that's what Embrace Growth's about, that's what romantic love is about for me. Um, and it's about the uh, helping others or you know, enabling others to choose romantic love and not just fall into it, right? When you fall into it, really what you're saying is, my logic went out the window <laughs> and now I'm weakened in the knees, right? I, my ability to stand on my own and go, wait a minute, I'm falling in love, but this isn't going to work. <laughs> She's married to the king, <laughs> right? You're, that That goes out the window. So creating romantic love. See, if Tristan and Isult had, uh, had these tools, she could have made her love for her king be true, yeah. and he could have gone found somebody his own age, you know, <laughs> that would fall in love with the knight, all right? So uh, I think we're at the end of the show. What do you think? Yes, thank you so much, Mr. Morgan, for amazing description of love and myth and the difference between them. Um, so people are just asking for more shows uh, with uh, subti Farsi subtitle as well. So thank you everyone for listening to the show. The English speakers and Farsi speakers, we are going to have more shows with Mr. Morgan. Yeah, I'm just going to make him promise right now in front I'm of the camera. I'm <laughs> promising to do more shows and I don't want to just keep it uh, like that. I'll at least do one show a month in the beginning and then I'll turn it into two weeks and then weekly yes. if, if there is a demand for it. Okay, if enough people are following and responding and, get, and benefiting from it, because that's the only reason I do it. I don't have to do this. I do it because I love you. Oh, thank you, you know? so much. Uh, you can call our office and book a session with Mr. Morgan. Just call 310-460-2600 and book your session with Mr. Gregory Morgan or go on uh, Embrace Growth application or website and purchase his CDs. Um, okay, here's end of the show. We're going to be back with another amazing show soon next month. Thank you. All right. And thank you, Neela, for showing up looking beautiful today and it being an expression of beauty and love and truth. Of course. Thank Always. you. Okay. Yeah. Bye bye. برنده بودن هنری است که یادگیری آن تمامی زندگی ما را تحت شعا قرار می دهد و زندگی عادی را به خارق العاده تبدیل می کند. 
صرفا رسیدن به اهداف و خواسته ها منجر به شادی و رضایت نمی شود. برندگان زندگانی می کنند. هنر برنده بودن. سمیناری فارسی توسط خانم دکتر آزیتا سایان. چهار روم مارچ ساعت هفت و نیم عصر در وارنر سنتر ماریت وودلند هیلز. بلیت های خود را همین الان از وبسایت و یا اپلیکیشن امبریس گروت تهیه بفرمایید و یا با شماره 310-460-2600 تماس بگیرید.